Jay here, and today we're going to look at the newest Necromunda book, Apocrypha Necromunda. This book contains updated rules and some new rules from all of these different previous publications. This is not the first time Necromunda has done an Apocrypha book. In fact, they've done many in the past. So let's take a look at the newest Necromunda book, Apocrypha Necromunda, this time on JD in the Sump Sea. Let me tell you about Badger Games, a new partner with JD in the Sump Sea. Badger Games sells Frostgrave, Stargrave, The Silver Bayonet, Dungeons and Lasers, Bolt Action, Perry Miniatures, Mantic, Cromlech, and so much more. By typing in JD2024 on your next online order, you'll help out the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Now back to the show. So as I said in the intro, um, this is not the first Apocrypha book that Games Workshop has released. In fact, they've done Apocrypha books going way back, all the way even to the old Warhammer Fantasy roleplay days. Uh, now this book was released in 1995, and it's for the old Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game. Since then, they've done other Apocrypha books. A White Dwarf Apocrypha, this is kind of a neat one. It has articles from White Dwarf that they've reprinted in here. They've also done Indexed Chaotica Apocrypha. And this book has some great artwork from way back. That's the Index Chaotica Apocrypha. I also have the Index of Stardust Apocrypha. This is a pretty neat book as well. This has some, again, some great old artwork and articles from, this is from Rogue Trader Rulebook, the first edition rulebook. And so yeah, so they've done Apocryphas in the past. I'm not here to talk about these books today. I can do a video on these in the future if you want. What we are here to talk about is the Apocrypha Necromunda book. Now, this book is very similar to those old books in that it's it goes uh, and, and reprints uh, previous uh, articles and rules and scenarios, things like that from older publications, be they older rule books or White Dwarf magazines. Um, some of them are kind of hard to come by now, so it's kind of nice that they've reprinted this. But they've also added into this book a bunch of new things, so including Nemesis CCs, things like that. So we're gonna take a look at that right now. So looking at the book, We'll just start at the beginning. Oh yeah, designer's note. It tells you uh, what the Apocrypha Necromunda is, is about. Like, well, why did they make this book? It says, Necromunda Apocrypha Necromunda is a toolbox for players and arbitrators providing them with the resource of previously out of print rules, updated rules, or rules that don't have logical place to live in other books. So uh, we start off with the Underhive Nemesis in Necromunda. I think this is a really interesting idea. This is definitely for arbitrators. And what you're able to do is you, um, as an arbitrator, and this is just kind of a, a, a general guideline. It's like first edition D&D where um, Gary Gygax kind of said in the rules that these are kind of guidelines for the, the DM to use. There's, there's no need to, to play exactly by the rules. You can take them as you wish. Um, that's one of the things I like about Necromunda. It's very RPG-ish in that if you have an arbitrator that runs your campaigns, they can do things outside of the main rules. And this book actually adds a lot of neat things uh, for the arbitrator to use outside of the main rulebook. Um, the Underhive Nemesis is one of them. Making Necromunda more RPG-like, I, I, I think does add depth and longevity to the game and more longevity to the campaign as well that you're playing in, as opposed to just having it be player versus player. So, uh, section two of the book is Living Setting. Now, Living Setting is really another new uh, part of this book that I originally thought was, I thought this was basically going to be talking about like a perpetual campaign, but the newest Necromunda rulebook actually has a great section on perpetual campaigns, campaigns that don't end. That's not what the Living Setting is. The Living Setting is a location for where your campaign is being set. So great examples of this have been made by the community already. The first one that I ever downloaded and actually printed and played with was the Book of the Sump. And the Book of the Sump is a great uh, unofficial supplement, it says here, but this is a great living setting where you've got these different locations 
in the sump C. Uh, this 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 PDF is, is free to download, but it's a great example of a living setting. As I was editing this video, Gilders Ford Radio, another Necromunda podcast, which I was going to talk about, has just released their newest PDF Necromunda supplement, the Gilders Ford Living Setting. This document has background lore and then also details the setting's population, commerce, and environment, exactly as described in the Apocrypha Necromunda book. This is the first example I have seen of a living setting detailed and organized using Apocrypha Necromunda, other than the included living settings in the book itself. I will have links in the description below if you want to download either the Book of the Sump or this Gilders Ford living setting document. This book talks about how to make it yourself as well. So you don't have to have just an example. This gives you kind of some steps on how to do it. So, of course, one of the things you need to figure out is um, population, uh, how many, you know, who lives there. That's a great, great beginning. Uh, commerce talks about, uh, you know, what, what goods are available there. For example, in the Book of the Sump, the commerce there revolves around um, sump spiders and collecting their eyeballs because they're valuable and rare. Of course, the environment, and of course, Book of the Sump, <laughs> the Sump Sea, there's your environment, right? Um, so those factors, it says down here, can be or will be determined by the arbitrator and can then be shared with the players. What they're implying here is that this setting could be something that's very familiar, and yet as they play, it, it shows that, in fact, it's not a very familiar setting. If that's a neat idea. You can use your nemesis as part of that setting and really come up with something interesting. Uh, population talks about the population, who's there. Uh, they have hired guns, you know, monsters. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on oh, to the example settings. So they give you some great examples too. So this is another thing that you could build your entire campaign in the Dust Falls setting, for example. They even talk about at the end here, the Sump City. So they even have some of this information about the Sump in this book which is what we all really are here for, to be honest. Okay, so let's go to the next section of the book, the Necromunda Resurrection Packages. Now, this was originally in White Dwarf 453, and I have another video that I went through and did all of the White Dwarf articles that have rules or are specifically relevant uh, Necromunda right now. And there is a link uh, in the description below, and I'll put it up, a link up there. And so then you can watch that video if you want to find out more about other articles in White Dwarf. But let's look at this one again, because I think this is interesting. This is one that I talked about before that they've now updated in this new book. So if we look at the White Dwarf, they kind of have a similar beginning here. They talk about using resurrection packages, benefits, price, end game in the new book. Same thing in the article, benefits, price, and end game. As we look through here, we've got some of the same uh, names as well. The uh, Archaeo Rebirth, the Dead of Blood, Demonic Possession, Dark Pact. We move to the next page, Ravenous Zombie and Revenant. Well, that's interesting. Uh, that's changed from the, the, the White Dwarf. Cannibal Corpse is what the White Dwarf called it, and Revenant. Uh, these are basically the same. Ravenous Zombie and Cannibal Corpse is the same thing. Um, if we turn the page here, we have... What do we have here? Xenos Resurrection. So this is another one that's the same. Skin Deep Doppelganger. All just great sounding things, if nothing else. And that's it, though. If you look at the White Dwarf, they're done. So in here, they add two new ones. They add the Stranger's Gift and Divine Intervention. This creates a new bounty hunter for the gang to hire. So that's kind of fun. Like a saint, like Celestine or something. They've come back to, you know... To be the voice, they heard the voice of the God Emperor, and this driven to do his bidding. I think the Stranger's Gift is a great idea. I think Divine Intervention, it could work. I think um, it feels like a Cawdor thing more to me than anything else, but the Stranger's Gift could work really well for anybody. So these are two good additions, I think, to the Resurrection Packages. Arbitrator Scenarios. So the Arbitrator Scenarios... The first one is called Terror in the Dark. So Terror in the Dark is originally from Gang War 3. It has a scenario called In the Dark. So in case you weren't aware, um, the first year of Necromunda went like this. They released the box set Necromunda Underhive, which had 
Goliaths and Eshers and rules to play the game and some tiles and that terrain pack that had the little barricades and the, the marker, the, the priority marker in it. And uh, when that box set was released, that was basically all Necromunda was in 2017. In 2018, they then went through the whole year slowly releasing additional gangs and rules for them in supplements called Gang War. There was Gang War 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in Gang War 3, there was a scenario called Into the Dark. And in this new book, there is Terror in the Dark. So this new scenario, Terror in the Dark, uh, is the In the Dark scenario from Gang War 3. But Gang War 3 also references the Underhive rulebook from the Underhive box set. It references the Horrors in the Dark special rule, which is in page 97, the main rulebook, which is in the scenario Forgotten Riches. So this Horrors in the Dark table, they've reproduced in the new Apocrypha book, Horrors in the Dark right here. So it's the same table. It's got the pitch black rules, just like the In the Dark scenario. And it has some of these other, uh, basically the, the rest of the scenario is the same. So basically they took the, can the, the scenario from Gang War 3 and they put it in the new book. The next one is Prison Break, which is also from Gang War 3. So let's find Prison Break and Gang War 3. These are basically the same again. So it's nice that they've updated this. The deployment in here talks about Sector Mechanicus or Zone Mortalis. It says it works best as a Zone Mortalis. That's the, the more flat based um, scenario that has like the tiles. They use the tiles from the main box. The nice thing about the new book here, the Apocrypha book, is that it updates all the rules from these old scenarios to make them make sense with the new rule book, so you don't have to do that yourself. Monster Hunt. These are very similar scenarios again. However, they've really changed how the Sump Horror works, and I find that interesting that they've changed it so dramatically. Um, as you can see, the weapon skill is much better and the movement is much better on the new Sump Horror. The old Sump Horror, its movement was only three and only let us go five. Not really sure why they did that. Yeah, so they used kind of the same rules still, um, where you use um, six markers that are beast layers. Now in the, in the old rules, it says six of them have to be destroyed. In the new rules, it says only four. And once they are, then the Sump Horror shows up. So that's kind of an interesting change. Um, and there's this acting on instinct now that the Sump Horror uh, does. So it does this table, this kind of AI table that is used to act in a certain way. The old one doesn't have it uh, quite that specific. It also talks about in the old scenario, about arbitrating scenario, how the arbitrator could include multiple sump horrors even. So that's an interesting idea. Anyway, very similar, but it's neat that they've reprinted it and that we can play it with the current rules without doing any modifications. So the next scenario is Fighter Down, and that's from the old 2018 rulebook. So after the Gang War books were all released, they then released the uh, rulebook for 2018. So in here, there is a scenario called Fighter Down. Well, Fighter Down, um, it is, again, basically the same, but it upda it's updated for the current rules. So things are just kind of worded a little bit differently. And uh, yeah, so you've still got the Carrion Hunters, same thing, same, same. And that's about it. There's really not much. Yeah, I would say there's really nothing else different here. So the arbitrated scenarios, uh, basically they're great skirmish scenarios or they're great arbitrated scenarios so the arbitrator can get involved and do something during the scenario and not just watch. Then also these scenarios make good multiplayer battles as well. In particular, the um, Terror in the Dark and the Monster Hunt are great multiplayer battles. So the next section is Gang Raid Scenarios. Now these are meant for very quick games um, and it changes the bottle check rules. They're, they don't include a leader, they only include one champion, and they cannot have any hangers on, brutes, or hired guns as part of the gang for these missions. These are small conflicts, they're removed from the larger wars between gangs over territory, so territory and rackets cannot be staked on a gang raid scenario. Delivering a blow to their opponent's pride is enough of a reward here. So fighting these scenarios, you will not lose territories or rackets, nor will you gain any. So yeah, 
that's the, these are basically here for a quick game maybe over lunch as it says here or smaller games can be played in an evening you can play multiple of these in one evening if you want um they're they're, they're nice pickup games too good skirmish games if you've got uh got an hour or two you could easily throw some of these together so the first one here is daylight robbery now these initially came in this gaming supplement and this one i believe came in a white dwarf at some point the idea is a small quick game okay so uh, but what's cool about this is that this came out during the time again, as I said before, of the tiles. So all of these scenarios have this, these tile layouts that you're supposed to use when you're playing the scenario. But, um, of course we don't necessarily want to do that. So, cause we don't have access to those nowadays because they've stopped selling them. There's the daylight robbery scenario, clandestine rendezvous. Oh, oh that must be in a different location here. Clandestine Rendezvous, there we go. These use a Corrupt Enforcers, which is always fun. What's the next one in the new book? Bar Brawl. Here we go, Bar Brawl. These have Hive Dwellers as well. This is kind of a fun one uh, with an, the Intoxicated Condition, which is always fun. And then the last one in here is the, let's see here. What do we have? Bar Brawl, Clandestine Rendezvous, and Daylight Robbery. That's funny. So they took out the Mercator Storehouse Heist. So there are no, there is no Mercator Storehouse Heist in here. So they took out one of the scenarios. All right, moving on, we have the Uprising Campaign. So the Uprising Campaign was originally in the uh, Dark Uprising box set. Here is the rule book for the uh, Dark Uprising Campaign from the box set. Now, the biggest difference I would say between this rule book and this is that the Apocrypha Necromunda has just the campaign. This is a full rule book. This book has the basic rules for how to play the game, how to roll the dice, how to roll the hit, how to wound, etc. And then it also has the campaign rules in here. It has uh, skills and some weapons warriors chart. This also has enforcer and corpse grinder cult game composition for the models that came in the box set, the Dark Uprising box set. So you can either buy this on eBay or you can get the Apocrypha Necromunda book which has the campaign in it. Now again, this is just the campaign, is not the full rule to play Necromunda. You would also need the Necromunda rule book. I think one of the good things about reprinting the campaign, they've been able to update the scenarios to the new rules because some things have changed enough that you'd want to have updated scenarios. If you were to play this campaign straight out of this book, you would probably need to do a little bit of modification because of the new rule book. Hit and run. Search and destroy. Meat Harvest, Public Execution, and there we go. The last section in this book is Outlaw Brutes. This was originally printed in White Dwarf 458. And again, I have another video that went through all the um, scenarios and all of the articles in White Dwarf and link right there, link down there. And let's take a look at what has stayed the same and what has changed. So, Outlaw Brutes. These are neat because uh, if you're playing an outlaw gang, this gives you a whole bunch of new models you can play with. So, uh, Scrap Code Corrupted Ambot. That is the first one uh, in both the White Dwarf and in the new book. And they are the same. Yeah, nothing has changed with this guy. The Mutated Ogre. Again, I don't believe anything has changed with the Mutated Ogren. No, Mutated Ogren is also the same as he ever was. The next one is the Sump Beast. Let's go to the Sump Beast. There's the Sump Beast. This one I find interesting because I do believe this one has changed a bit. It has. They've changed the stat line. And why, I don't really know. It's this weird thing that they, the Sump Horror from that one scenario, and then again, the Sump Beast in the... The, the outlaw brutes they've changed the stat lines and i don't really i don't really see the point of doing that but they they'd have so and i would say if you have this white dwarf but you don't have the apocrypha necromunda you know ask the arbitrator but i feel like you should be able to use the white dwarf if you have the book use the book but i don't think that it's not going to matter that much to be honest let's see uh is there the fourth one in the apocrypha necromunda let's find out Ah, the Warp Horror. There is the Warp Horror. So there's the Warp Horror here. And yeah, it's basically the same. 
additional clan house vehicle rules. So you've got Bansar vehicle equipment, Escher, Goliath, Cawdor, Orlock, and Delock. And then there is a Delock vehicle crew called the Wraith and Delock vehicle gang tactics. So that's pretty cool. And that is the book. I hope that the video has informed you somewhat as to whether you want to pick one up yourself. I think it's a great book for arbitrators. I think it could be used for players as well. Of course, the Outlaw Brutes is a nice thing to have if you have uh, an Outlaw gang. Uh, if you're playing with vehicles a lot, having this book for those extra vehicle weapons of warrior is nice. Um, there's also a vehicle crew in here for the Deloc. If you are an arbitrator, I feel like this is a book you should pick up unless you really don't want to add extra things to your campaign and want to play straight out of the main rule book. If you want to add some spice, new scenarios, a nemesis, a living setting is a great idea uh, for your gaming group. Great opportunity for new terrain, great opportunity for new models. I think this is a great book for arbitrators and I definitely recommend picking this up if you run Necromunda campaigns. But that's just my opinion. What do you think? Do you think this is good for arbitrators or gamers? Am I missing something? Please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I have for you this time. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.